when most of us here in the crypto market is looking at the history, trying to understand what exactly is happening and which direction we are actually going to, there's a lot of things involved, especially the price action or how the market is responding in terms of buying and selling. Is the price going up? Is the price going down? Or is there something, something which is comparable to the past? Is there something which shows you last time this happened, the result was like this? Any time in the history, when you go look at something and see, okay, 8 out of 10 times when this particular candle formed, you watch the price rising. Now, sometimes, yes, it's 40%, sometimes it's just 10%. There is a difference between that. But what gives the authority for us to look at this and say, okay, this may happen, that's what we should be focusing on. And that's exactly what we are going to detail in this video. Welcome to the Scientific Investor family, where the normal retail guys get to learn how to become the next top 10 person of this world. Now, when we do look at these assets and say, okay, last month, this guy went up 50% when the market is slow. This guy went up 60%. Again, the market is slow or this guy is traveling towards that 45. Look at what we were sharing. This is earlier this month. This was a couple of months back. So if you do look at the price of where it was and where it is now and what was the argument there, it is playing out. Yes, 100% move may not sound that big on a spot bag, but it is good when the market, overall market, has not done much. Whether that's AR, whether that's LPT, whether that's AKT, we shared all of these thought process so that you guys understood this is coming. Now, why am I saying that? What is coming next is of huge importance. It all starts with Bitcoin, agreed, but it then go in to Ether, it then go in to the altcoin market. We cannot deny the fact that this is happening in front of us. Now, if you're on the news side of things, when this is happening, that does mean the value of the currency is going down. Any assets priced against that currency should appreciate in value. That's basic. So you are looking at what's happening in the economy. You are understanding that the load on the government to spend more is increasing. They're already buried in debt. What are they going to do next? And that's one of the reasons why I think Raul is spot on. Yes, the horizon may not be short term because whatever he's using is macro indicators. That means, yes, you are about to see something which may push the price higher. So the way he talks, he's giving you that signal that he thinks that the market is headed in the right direction. Now, when you look at the rules, the statutes, framework kind of scenario, this again is positive. But this is US. You really don't know what the hell is going to happen. We'll get all these news, but the vote may turn into a no, right? So until we get clarity there, we'll wait. We won't speculate on that. But we do see the reality. The facts that cannot be changed is here. This is $2 trillion asset, like $2.4, $2.5 5 trillion. And that's the size of Canadian equities. That's the size of EV, EM bonds, which is emerging market bonds. So you're now seeing a huge increase of the size compared to where it was. And the technology and its adoption is not going anywhere. 
Now this is for US, top US banks with MasterCard, with JP Morgan. Now I'm not saying this is all on the XRP ledger. It can be something like Sologenic. It can be something like XRP, yeah, XLM. It can be different parts of this technology, but that all shows you tokenized assets and settlements is important, which means the target market is so big. And even if you have huge competition, the macro direction is going to play out. All that you're looking at right now is a micro. If you're interested in micro, yes, you are looking through that, trying to understand what the market is showing you. However, the macro is something you should not neglect. Now, you'll have to slowly zoom out. This is XRP. So bear in mind, this volatility is still alive. You did not erase that to the upside. So that did not happen. Which means right now, even though you are at a support level like this, which goes all the way deep down 2.42, the price can still retest those levels. One of the primary concerns here in the market is that we put in lower highs again and again and again. So until we break that chain, we do have some negative shade on this asset. Mm -hmm. If you are looking to buy a lot of it, okay, maybe it's good for you. But if you are someone who has already bought into this asset a long time ago, now that shows your waiting period is a little bit longer. You are still waiting for this to bounce off to give you a confirmation that yes, it's headed to the upside. Will we get that retest and bounce? That's what we'll wait to see on this asset. But now if you do zoom a little bit back on weekly, it is still testing the moving average and getting rejected, not breaking above it. Breaking above is what we want to see, but it doesn't matter what we want. What matters is what the market shows you. Now here is Ether on the same side. It is following Bitcoin, right? So when you actually come into XRP, this is your daily candle. It doesn't actually give you that idea, right? It's a little bit different than what we just saw in Ether. So Ether is kind of following Bitcoin. So coming back to Bitcoin, when you had inverted hammer structure, the price is now a little bit up. Last time, the op when the opposite happened, price came down. When the opposite happened, the price came down. Clear? That's good. When the opposite happened, the price came down. Now you understand that. You're slowly going back each and every time the current scenario happened. Last time it went up 12%. Fine. Before that, it went up 25%. Before that, it was 13%. Before that, it was 41%. So you go back in history and you're trying to wrap around all the information so that you can make the right decision. In front of you is the support level, which is critical for Bitcoin, which is like 60,500, 59,800, that kind of a range. But what we would like to see and what I'm looking towards is this forming as an ABC or a one, two, three pattern. The impulses is going to be important here. If you're able to break this range, that's key because it's been extended from here all the way till this point. So if you can break 70,000 mark in Bitcoin, that gives you a huge advantage. Now, staying in Bitcoin, zoom out. On a three-day chart, you're still struggling. You do have that inverted hammer, which usually suggests that I can go up in price. You move back onto the weekly because the weekly close is coming in 24 hours. And it shows you, yeah, the last candle, that was a hammer. It is cool. It's all good. But right now, you're still testing that again and again. So the buyers are not 
that strong. If you compare the selling and the buying volume, you can see sellers are still active. They are still dominating the weekly scenario. You have not yet seen a reversal. Now, can that happen within the next 24 hours before the weekly close? We'll see. We'll see. Now, coming back onto the matter of the altcoin side of things, we are now watching lower highs on lower highs on lower highs. That scenario is not good. But yes, if you are a pattern guy and you are looking at this, you can argue that this is a falling wedge pattern formation, which historically breaks to the upside. Mm, okay, that's a daily chart showing you Ether and most likely the altcoin market as a whole. Now, let's take the altcoin market, say exclude Ether and look for other coins and let's see if that's going to perform well. On a three-day chart, you do have the exact same candle structure, which we discussed before, which pushed the price up a little bit even at that point of time. So when we go back in history, we see such price action candles gave you an advantage in the market. Right now, the trouble is you go on a weekly and you're like, okay, I'm still waiting for a confirmation for this to be a checkmate pattern. Whether it's a bullish checkmate, whether that's a bearish checkmate, you'll have to look at the market and ask that what are you watching in front of you because when the price actually come down to a support and it tries again and again and again and again it becomes a bull flag a bear flag but then what happens if you see that the price is breaking this neckline it's not a flag anymore rather it is now a checkmate pattern are we watching that that's something you have to ask yourself because this range on my eyes kind of shows me that. I'm like, okay, on a weekly, we are kind of doing this. This range is now strong. You came down. You could not continue to the downside. The pressure is being released. It's like the pressure cooker. You're releasing the pressure. You're not being able to push through to the downside. Even though you had a wick to the downside here, another one here and another one here. So it's struggling to push it to the downside. Now watch this. We had decent amount of buying here, which created a hammer. But yeah, it didn't end up in a bullish shaved candle like this. Fine. Now we have that amount of volume in selling. And again, you have very muted price action. You're not dropping like nuts to the downside. That is positive. That is one of the reasons why maybe I'm completely wrong on this one. I'm right now looking at the market to see more opportunities to enter into more trades. Yes, volume is important. Yes, the price action is important. Yes, the overall trend in that asset is important. You are looking at one asset. You don't want to buy something which has already popped in the short term. You want to make sure it still has a macro upside so that when you enter on that micro, you are not entering on a fake out. You're trying to make sure all of those things. And if you want help for such things like these, join the SI family where you actually get to see all of these one by one by one by one. Thousand plus members are watching close to 17,000 plus posts of the crypto market. Yes, that's a lot, but it comes as an average of 10, 15 posts a day so that you are well aware of what the market is showing. If you are watching what the 30-day scenario is, you're like, okay, there are a few assets which are trying to break higher. You may not be able to grasp all of those. Some of them, them can be red flag. Some of them can be an opportunity. Just like the AR here was an opportunity and we call it out. There's another one which is still a red flag and it is showing short-term upside. And we told that we'll do that and then trap people and drop to the downside. So 
understanding the market, if that's what you're looking at, SI Family is there to educate you through this journey. So guys, if you received value and you haven't smashed that like button yet, I would request you, consider doing that. Obliterate that. I'll meet you guys on the next video. Bye for now.